Good evening and welcome to our cocktail concert. We're a group of Kent musicians who decided we'd like to do something to raise money for Christian aid and this is the result. We've called it a cocktail concert for two reasons. Firstly, because we're presenting, premiering it when you might be having a drink before your evening meal, a time sometimes called the cocktail hour, and our concert lasts just over an hour. Secondly, because like a cocktail, the music we're offering is a mixture of different ingredients, both of instruments and, and styles. We've got classical music from the Baroque to the 20th century, folk music, jazz, and even a short medieval piece. And it can be played on pianos, harps, and a harpsichord, and another instrument which will come as a surprise right at the beginning of the concert. We hope this will make a combination of flavours you'll enjoy and find relaxing, like a good cocktail. Before we start, let me tell you about the charity we're doing this for. Christian Aid raises money to support sustainable development in poor countries. It works through local churches and other organisations to be sure that the money is spent well and appropriately on small practical things which alter people's lost lives, not on big prestige projects of dubious value or diverted into the pockets of corrupt officials. For example, a few years ago, we raised money for a project in rural Kenya, which improved maternity care by simple things like educating fathers on the needs of their wives in pregnancy, and by providing motorbikes to get women in labour to hospital where there were no roads. This year's Christian Aid theme is ecological justice. Climate change affects us all. But like so many problems, its greatest impact is on very, very poor people. For example, Rose Katanu Jonathan from Kenya is in her 60s, but working to look after her grandchildren. And she says, when I was young, there was plenty of food. Now the rains are totally unreliable because of climate change. I worry a lot about food. During droughts, she has to walk most of the day to get water. She says, because I'm old, I can't walk very far. When I get home, I just rest. I've no energy to do anything else. Even when rain comes, the earth dam a few minutes away from Rose's home, which collects water, isn't big enough. So the water only lasts a few days. From the money raised from things like this concert, Christian Aid can pay for the dam to be enlarged, which will save Rose and others like her a long daily walk for water. If you want to see how simple things like this can change lives, there's a video about, oh, about Florence, whose village already has a Christian Aid funded earth dam, and I'll put the link to that at the end of the concert. We aren't charging for this concert, and although some of our performers are professionals, no one's being paid to take part, so that we hope you'll make a generous donation to Christian Aid. You can do that from the link which is just below the link to this concert on the St Stephen's Christian Aid page. We'll post that at the end of this concert too. So now it's time to start. I'm going to hand you over to Father Kevin Maddy the Rector of St Stephen's, Canterbury, who, who is actually a very skilled piano player, but he's going to start with something rather different for you.
Good evening and welcome to the concert. I hope you enjoyed the fanfare. It's not often that I get the trumpet out for um, for these occasions, but tonight we decided it was a good idea to start with a fanfare. Um, I would actually planned to record uh, Poulenc's Melancholy on the piano for you this evening, but um, I'm not happy with um, how how it's come along so i've uh, recorded a couple of other pieces uh, neither of them have been rehearsed so the, there are probably quite a lot of mistakes in them but nevertheless i've recorded um one of rachmaninoff's preludes obus 24 number six and uh, one of the preludes from book one of bach's vol temperata clavia um, it's prelude number 15 in g major the concert tonight, of course, is in aid of Christian Aid, and so I hope this is uh, a good means of supporting the work of Christian Aid in place of the annual collection. And I hope you enjoy the concert. Thank you.
So hello everybody, I hope you're having a good evening and thank you to Peter for asking me to take part in this concert. Um, I'm Claire and I know Peter because I teach him harp but actually Peter teaches himself harp and I just give him a few tips every now and then. And um, I'm going to do a couple of things for you, I'm going to play a set of three short little pieces by the French romantic composer and harpist Hasselmann and then a little jazzy piece afterwards. Um, so um, Hasselmann is one of my favourite harp composers and um, I just love all that French romantic music. I love all, the harp could do all styles but I, I, you know, it's lovely for that. And um, he was head of harp at the Paris Conservatoire in sort of I think the, the mid 1880s, a post he held for about 25 years. And these three little pieces um, are Reverie, Rouet and Ronde de Nuit. So Reverie, as you would expect, is just a dreamy piece and it has sort of big, big chords in it and then a flowing middle section. And Rouet, the spinning wheel, I think you'll know what that's about when you hear it. And then Ronde de Nuit, which is, well, I suppose Ronde is a round dance and so it's a nighttime round dance. <laughs> and it's quite a sort of slow, stately piece that fades away into nothing at the end. So Reverie first. Thank you. 
I hope you enjoyed those. And um, then finally, I'd like to play this little piece, Black Orchid, which comes from a collection of pieces by Krista Grix called Up the Garden Path, where each piece is a different flower. So this is Black Orchid. Now you're in for a treat because I'm going to hand you over to James who's going to play some jazz piano. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to play three jazz standards by, to my mind, three of the greatest songwriters, certainly of the 20th century. Uh, the first one is Someone to Watch Over Me by uh, George and Ira Gershwin. Thank you. 
I suppose there are a couple of points I ought to have clarified there. Um, in a sense, it's really four songwriters I'm talking about because it was George and Ira Gershwin. Obviously, you don't get the magic of his lyrics with just an instrumental arrangement, but he was a very important contributor. Um, now, the next two are going to be a medley, the first of which is going to be uh, Cole Porter's I Love Paris, and that's going to segue, I hope fairly naturally, into uh, Blue Skies by Irving Berlin. Now, between them, the Gershwins, Cole Porter and Irving Berlin, I don't know how many great standards they accounted for, but uh, a lot, <laughs> an awful lot. So here goes. I love Paris, which I do, by the way, anyway.
show. Here's Helen Naturist with some harpsichord music. Evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Helen Natras here to play the harpsichord for you. I'm falling between two piano sessions, so we're going back in time now to about the year, the year 1717 and the music of François Couperin, the great harpsichordist at the court of King Louis XIV of France. We're talking about a contemporary of J.S. Bach in Germany and Antonio Vivaldi in Italy. And at that time, the Italians thought their music was the most alive. The Germans thought their music was the most correct. And the French thought their music was the most elegant. And I hope you'll find that too. I'm going to begin with playing some short excerpts from um, Couperin's book about how to play the harpsichord and he has a big introduction where he tells the player um, how to play. And he's got some really great things in here. He's going to say, he says things like, when seated at the harpsichord the body should be turned very slightly to the right, the knees not pressed too closely together, the feet should be kept side by side, but the right foot especially well out. And then he's got a wonderful here. He says, with regard to making grimaces, it is possible to break oneself of this habit by placing a mirror on the reading desk of the spinet or harpsichord. It's really very salutary one here. It is better and more seemly not to beat time with the head, the body, nor with the feet. One should have an air of ease at one's harpsichord, not gazing too fixedly at one object, nor yet looking too vague. In short, look at the assembled company, if there be one, as if not occupied with anything else. Um, this advice is only for those who play without the help of their books. So unfortunately, I don't fall into that category tonight. But here comes the seventh prelude from L'Art de Toucher le Couperin. Sorry, L'Art de Toucher le Clavecin Couperin by Francois Couperin, published in 1717. Thank you. 
after the little prelude, here comes Les Barricades Mysterieuses from the second book of Couperin's Piano Works, published in 1717, and from the sixth suite, the sixième ordre, Les Barricades Mysterieuses, Mysterious Barricades. Nobody knows what Couperin meant by that. Often he dedicated his pieces to personalities at court or called them off to countryside scenes or birds, but um, they barricade mysterious, mysterious barricades. Well, they fences in fields, a maze, spiritual difficulties. One writer I heard thought it might be to do with ladies' underwear. Anyway, here we go. Les barricades de mysterieux. See what you make of it. I wondered if you might like a little tour of my instrument. It's um, a modern instrument built on historic principles in 1996 by a Danish maker, Rasmus Manley of Copenhagen. Here's his name. I wonder if we can see it here. Rasmus Manley, Copenhagen. And here you can see, you can see the two manuals with ebony sharps and snake wood and pear wood to make the keys and then inside you can see it's got three sets of strings it's got two sets strung along the edge here which are the ones that sound at you call normal pitch and then he's got another set strung right across the keyboard right across the sound board going up there and those are the ones that are called the forefoot those are the ones that sound an octave higher they go out of tune really quickly and can you see the lovely woodwork that Rasmus has done on the lid I could have had it painted but I didn't want that. I thought his woodwork was just simply wonderful. And then you can see here the double bent side. That's um, quite tricky to make. And that's reminiscent of the designs of Zell of Germany, 
But the instrument itself, apart from its shape, is built a very light construction which gives it wonderful resonance. And the light construction is very much in the Italian style. So though it looks a bit German in shape, it's got this wonderful, wonderful resonance that comes from its light construction. And inside, of course, it's got lots of wooden props that we can't see, which are called elbows in the trade. Um, and that's, what's, that's what keeps the, the, the frame from collapsing under the tension of the strings. And right here, you can see the jacks, which are what, when I press a note, you can see it goes up there. Look for that. It goes. So that's what makes the sound. And if you look carefully here, you can see the little quill. Let's see if you get the focus right. The little quill that plucks the string and the red piece of felt which comes down when you let your finger down and that damps the sound on the string so it doesn't all, all merge into one ghastly amorphous noise. And this thing here called, called the jack rail, it stops the jacks catapulting into outer space when you're going at sort of 90 miles an hour. And um, one of the interesting things that a harpsichord can do, which a piano is really, it's really, really difficult on the piano, is the harpsichord, if you play a note and you manage to, you can strike it again before the damp comes down. So you don't go in, you can get this wonderful. heard some of that effect in those Cooperan pieces I was playing. The piece I'm going to play next are a million miles away from that. They're sort of Spanish, sorry, they're Italian galliards and they're real foot stamping dances from the middle 16th century so they're nothing to do with beautiful sustained sound, they're to do with strict tempo galliards. But more of that in a moment. I hope you've enjoyed looking at my instrument. So I'm going to switch this thing off now and get prepared for the galliards. Hello again everybody. Well here comes the Italian galliards from 1561. Three little galliards with the final one as a reprise. <laughs>
Cheers everybody. I'm handing over to Ian Carmalt on the piano now. Hello, I'm Ian Carmalt, pianist. Uh, in the days before this pandemic was invented, I used to play three days a week for ballet classes and for Faversham Choral Society. Uh, I still just about play the organ at St Nicholas Church in Sturry. Uh, you've just heard me introduce myself by playing my signature tune, uh, Andantino, which dates from my days as an undergraduate music student in Cambridge at a place that's now called Anglia Ruskin University. Uh, I'm going to continue with what appears to be an example of the sort of thing that even very serious composers on the outside, like John Ireland, wrote when they needed some money. This was in the days when there were thousands of pianos in people's homes, upper middle class, or probably any class where there was room for them, to be honest. And of course, there was a huge market for uh, charming, uh, easy to uh, listen to and uh, not naughty difficult to play miniatures for people to play in those pianos on their, in, in their homes. Uh, this group of three dances was published in 1913. Uh, there isn't time for all three of them so I'll play Country Dance and Reaper's Dance.
going to finish with something to go to sleep by. Well, at least it, it is if you're a baby. So if you happen to have a baby's hand who you like to get to sleep, this may be a good time to pause the video and go and fetch him or her. Uh, it was a song um, setting a Greek folk tale in which a mother engages the wind, the sun and the eagle to look after her child. Well, the wind completed the task with science, flying colours, but for only three nights, apparently, the, the other two appear to have shirked the job altogether. Um, anyway, the, um, in its piano solo, guys, it's known as Lullaby, of 16, number one by Tchaikovsky. And if you do go to sleep, uh, please wake up in time for the closing set in this concert, uh, given by the mastermind behind the whole project's Peter Toon and his lever harp. Hello again. You may remember that when Jesus turned the water into wine at the wedding at Cana in Galilee, the guests said the usual practice was to keep the rough wine until later, when people were too drunk to notice the difference. Well, that's the policy we've adopted. I'm very much a novice compared to the other performers you've heard tonight. But I hope that by now your cocktails will have mellowed you so much 
that you don't notice my mistakes. What you may have noticed is that my harp's a lot smaller than Claire's. It's often called a Celtic harp or a Clarsac. It has 34 strings, four and a half octaves. It's often used for folk music, although you can also play classical music and even jazz on this type of harp. I'm going to start with some music by Janet Bennett, who's a contemporary harpist from Northumberland. If you're a Downton Abbey fan, you may have caught a glimpse of her playing in the 2014 Christmas special. Her music's in a traditional sort of Celtic style, a reminder that Newcastle is actually very close to Scotland. The two pieces are called Lament for a Broken String and Rowan, and they sort of merge into each other. I want to play you a piece in a very, very different style from anything you've heard so far this evening. It's called a medieval cantiga. It's one of over 400 songs praising the Virgin Mary, which come from a manuscript from 13th century Spain. I've got to change key for this piece which on my harp is done with these levers here, which shorten the, the string by a semitone. Claire, you may remember, didn't do this. The concert harp has pedals to change keys with your feet. So now I've put up the B-flat levers and hopefully I've gone from F major into C major, although this song actually is in the Dorian mode.
I'm going to end with two lullabies. The first is a Hebridean one to the Christ child, which is traditionally played at Christmas Midnight Mass. And the second is a French nursery song, the words of which tell the child to fait dodo, which is French for go to bye bye. I hope you will go to bye byes later, but before that, I hope you'll make your donation to Christian Aid. And if you like, you can also join us for post concert chat on Zoom. The links for both of those are on the on the St Stephen's Canterbury Christian Aid site. So we change key again because these are pieces are in D minor or uh, so it, the, the key the harp is tuned as if it's into D into G major. Thank you and good night.